Lee Fung with the Republic Report. RepublicReport.org is on the line with us. Lee, welcome back to the program. Good to be here. How are you, Tom? I am great. Great to have you with us. And uh, Republic Report, you guys have invested in, have unearthed a bunch of things. I mean, it's just like every day I get this thing in email and it's like, whoa, not, oh, I can't believe it. And uh, RepublicReport.org, people can read it, but, and, and they can sign up for the email newsletter. But the thing that really blew my mind was that these, car- these carcinogenic substances are allegedly carcinogenic or whatever. You correct me on this. Um, if the, this whole flame retardant thing that Congress, the members of Congress are actually willing to poison themselves for money, just as a bottom line. Well, Let me toss it to you and you can explain what I'm talking about. Here's the phenomenal thing, Tom. You know, usually when you hear about Congress uh, legislating on environmental issues, at least this Congress, uh, they're uh, allowing toxic dumps or, you know, uh, various spills in other places, you know, right. in the middle Usually, of nowhere America. Or, or poor African-American communities down south in Cancer Alley, for example. Exactly. Uh, places that aren't actually affecting the congressmen themselves. But here's uh, a unique example of congressmen uh, requesting carcinogenic ch- chemicals for their own buildings. Uh, at issue here is a pitched lobbying battle uh, between uh, makers of toxic flame retardants, which actually include ExxonMobil because they make the, the chemical ingredient uh, for these uh, materials that are used in buildings. And there are new leads, what's called a gold lead standard, uh, that's going to be implemented in new federal buildings and for construction in existing federal buildings. Um, the lobbyists... Hey, if I may interrupt you for just a moment, for people who don't know what a lead standard is, it's L-E-E-D. Can you tell us what that is? It's a special uh, designation that a building can have uh, showing that it's uh, environmentally safe, uh, that the air quality is good, and that there's uh, energy efficiency standards. Right. It's basically just a, a standard uh, to, to move America forward in, in terms of uh, new construction materials. Okay, so, so uh, these congressional buildings are up to get this LEED certification, and? and? And these are the buildings that congressmen work in, uh, but because lobbyists from the American Chemistry Council, which represents these, uh, the makers of these toxic flame retardants, uh, they asked Congress to fight LEED standards in their own buildings. And it wasn't just one or two congressmen saying, okay, we'll, we'll fight these new standards. It was 55 uh, members of Congress signed a letter uh, demanding uh, that the federal government do not implement uh, these new standards, even in their own buildings. And, and these chemicals aren't just linked to cancer. Uh, they're linked to infertility. Uh, they're linked to uh, various uh, sexual problems. So it's it's actually pretty astounding that are, are they li- are they linked to brain disorders because these <laughs> uh, okay well, that might I, explain something then yeah uh, some some backstory on that we're talking with Lee Fong and with the Republic Report RepublicReport.org you can read all this over there my understanding Lee and and correct me if I'm wrong on this is that the reason that we started getting flame retardants in our carpets and in our sofas and our and our baby clothes for that matter was because back in the 50s or 60s or maybe 70s, but I think it was earlier than that, that there was a push by the Ralph Nader types for the tobacco industry to stop putting a chemical in cigarettes that keeps them burning when they're not being sucked on. Normally, tobacco goes out on its own if you don't keep token on it. And the and so the, chemi- the tobacco companies add this, this chemical to the cigarettes so that they continuously burn. And the, the, a lot of people's homes were catching on fire, their furniture was catching on fire, people would fall asleep with a cigarette or, you know, whatever. And, and, uh, and so to end this problem, it was proposed that the cigarettes be made uh, auto-extinguishing. The tobacco company didn't want to do that, but there was so much publicity about the problem of cigarettes catching houses on fire that they basically invented this solution to the problem, which was, oh, well, let's just make, let's just douse everything in flame retardant chemicals rather than making cigarettes safe. Do I have that right? Yeah, that's actually uh, pretty accurate, and I would suggest that your audience uh, take a look at the Chicago Tribune investigation of this invest- of, of these chemicals. They've looked at the multi-year effort uh, to develop them, the wide use, even in uh, sofas and, and, and children's toys, and then the overlapping effort uh, by these companies to suppress the science that shows that these chemicals are not safe at all and are linked to all types of different health problems. So... 
so the the only reason that we have all these flame retardants, and these are among the, you know, and Bill Moyers famously had his blood tested, and it came back with, as I recall, 110 different carcinogens in his blood. A number of them were fire flame retardants. And it's because you know you sit on the couch, you inhale the dust from the from the from the carpet. You, it's it's just it's like these things have since the. Uh, what, what, do you know the decade? Was it the '60s, the '70s, the '50s? I, I believe so, but uh, was, I think it was. I thought it was the '60s too. But but in any case, that, uh, since that period of time, you know, we're basically saturated with this stuff, and that it was the tobacco industry that brought this to us, and now it's taken on a life of its own. Do I have that right? Because it's become an industry. Oh, it's it's found everywhere. Uh, it's not just in, uh, inside building materials. It's in even just everyday products that you wouldn't even imagine. Um, NPR also had a great story uh, showing that uh, breast milk, uh, you test average breast milk in America and you find uh, dozens of these chemicals. Now, the other thing that I understand is that nobody's life has ever been saved by flame retardants, and that's a pretty outrageous statement to make, but is there any truth to that? Well, a lot of the uh, flame retardants, at least profile in my story here, um, they aren't linked to uh, reducing any fire threats. I mean, there's very little evidence that they do. So you, you have to look at the deeper reason why these congressmen are standing up and demanding these uh, carcinogens be used in their buildings. And it comes back to money and politics. These chemical companies are huge campaign contributors. And after the Citizens United decision, uh, chemical companies were one of the first big lobbies to, to step up and start using direct corporate cash in our elections. The American Chemistry Council, which made this action alert, asking these congressmen uh, to take action uh, and prevent these lead standards, uh, was one of the first to run ads in the 2010 elections, again, with direct corporate cash. Amazing. Were the, you said 56 members of Congress have petitioned the... Uh who 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 oversees the buildings? The is that General Services Administration? General Services Administration. Uh, yeah. To to uh, please give them their flame retardants. Um, are all of these people of one political party, or is this scattered throughout both parties? You know, we've been calling around. We don't actually have a copy of the letter. The Federal Times has a copy, and they said it's, it's uh, uh, led by Congressman uh, Mike Pompeo from Kansas, who famously represents uh, Wichita. He's been deemed the congressman from Coke. Uh, he's the Koch brothers' ca uh, congressman. That's right, because he's so favorable to their agenda. He's actually a personal friend of Charles Koch, but he's leading this effort. And uh, are the Koch brothers, do they make flame retardants? Well, that's a good question. You know, the Coke, Coke Industries, the company owned by the Koch brothers, is massive. They make uh, dozens of different chemicals, but because they're a private company, we have uh, very little information. They make dioxin and, and many other things that cause cancer, but I, I, I couldn't give you a, a clear answer for this one. Is there a use for dioxin? Uh, they say there's a use in, in oil refining, so uh, that's why they produce it. Wow, that stuff is really, really nasty. Um, so, Lee, uh, in the minute we have left here, uh, what should we do about this? Well, you know, we're highlighting uh, some reporting from the Federal Times, but, you know, this is a, a tiny little newspaper in Washington, D.C. that normally has little notice in the rest of the country. The, the best thing uh, folks could do right now is simply... Uh, inform themselves and write and communicate to their congressman. If you find out that your member of Congress uh, is part of this letter, this effort to request carcinogens in federal office buildings, ask them why. And, uh, you know, I would ask that uh, folks become citizen journalists and tape themselves asking their congressman. And when they get that response, put it online and yeah. tell the world. I, if nothing else, this really demonstrates, I mean, 56 members of Congress willing to poison themselves and their families in order to get campaign contributions in the chemical industry. It really demonstrates that we need to roll back Citizens United with a constitutional amendment. Go to movetoamend.org and do something about that. Lee Fong with republicreport.org, uh, one of the brilliant investigative reporting sites. If, you, if you're not a regular visitor to republicreport.org, you need to become one. Lee, thanks so much for being with us Thank today. Thank you, Tom. Great talking with you, as always. Uh, Lee, one of the great investigative reporters in this country.